Alrighty. Uh, how about a roll call? I'm here. Pete Thomas. Jen is not. Okay. Carolyn, you're here. Yep. Jay. Jay Stryker. Holly. Holly Lankowski. Kelly. Kelly Shrest. And Diane. Present. Okay. Checked off. Uh, do we have any guests calling in tonight? Don't see any up on the board here. Uh, is there a representative from the Friends of Deerfield? Uh, Jen, Jen would be the one who would know that, so I'm, okay. I'm not Please aware. Open. And we're starting this meeting at 6.37. Okay, uh, are there any items to be added to the agenda tonight? Anybody like to post anything? Uh, my finding Deerfield proposal. At the yeah. very, you can put me at the end if I'm not already on. That's good. Okay. I'm taking notes here. Uh, let's see. Moving on, uh, somebody um, approve the minutes for uh, February 28th. I make that motion, Carolyn. I second it, Holly. Uh, any discussion? No. no corrections, whatever. I mean, I pulled this off again. <laughs> Come on, there must be a spelling <laughs> error there somewhere. <laughs> Okay. P, you do really well. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, Carolyn. Aye. Aye, Holly. All righty. Um, I don't have the agenda because it was up. I didn't have the time to pull it down out of my email. Uh, I've got post office cancellation. Is that the next one on the agenda? Um, yes. Yeah, yes. Uh, Jen, uh, Jen was going to, Jennifer Remillard was going to um, come with a finalization of that. So I okay. guess we'll just have to put it off till next month. Okay, so we'll table that for the time being. Um, parade entry documents. Yes, um, I passed those through um, to through Carolyn to legal. I heard back from Casey Warren with some edits. Um, I have not thoroughly gone through them, but they didn't look to be too severe, which is good. Um, I'm going to get those updated, and um, I think uh, we should be able to move forward on that. Okay. Uh, Holly, I'm sorry that uh, Casey couldn't get it corrected because she didn't have the PDF. So if you have any questions, just call her, um, you know, uh, when you're doing the corrections. Okay. Apparently, they are, apparently they were pretty minor. Yeah, I, they seem to be pretty minor. And um, one question I had, Carolyn, um, because I was going back through my notes and we had one message back some time ago. Um, I'll just see if I could tell you from who. Um, uh, From Kevin Murphy, who is with FCAT, or talking about FCAT, do you know who he is? Um, he's a technology person at Frontier, but he works with FCAT, I think. Okay, okay. So he was saying, and I did not find this, you know, you're going back through things. He said it would be great if we could have a checkbox on the form um, just so. Um, whoever is going to join the parade um, agrees to be filmed. And that way there won't be any, con you know, conflict there. So oh, with, that's good. you can just add it then. Okay, that's what I thought. Um, so I think when I do the edits, um, what I do is I'll just pass things back through Casey just to have a peek. Yep, that's And fine. that way, you know, I'll just tell her the minor changes that were made and then we'll go from there. Yep. Um, I did verify with FCAT that they're going to, um, I, they have our calendar of events already. Um, so they're going to be scheduled the, what's already on our calendar. They've agreed to cover. And if there's more events, um, we just have to let them know as time goes on. Okay, great. 
but they made a commitment to cover all our events so far. Okay. Diane, did you have a question? Actually, I have two questions. What is the parade route? And I, do you um, send mailers to the businesses? How do you get them to, uh, do you solicit them or do you just post that we wanna hear from you? Um, we're, we're trying to follow what Sunderland did, which was pretty organized and they did invitations now oh, okay. it doesn't it doesn't mean if someone's interested and we didn't know they were interested that we couldn't get an invitation out. It's not going to be you know exclusive. Um, it's just that we have a process to follow, and because of liability and other things, um, we have forms and documents that have to be done in a prescribed way for everybody. So okay. if so, if someone's interested. Um, and as we start to flush out a list and you don't see them there, then please speak up. Or if you know of somebody, refer their name to me. Exactly, exactly. Okay. That would be fine. Um, I just, um, can I just make a small update about the parade just yeah. while yeah. we're on this topic? Yeah. Um, I, because we have had um, limited, um, volunteers specific to any particular task right now. Um, I actually had reached out to the South Deerfield Women's Club at a few recent meetings. Oh, good idea. And, and there's, um, there's some good interest from a handful of people. I'm not saying it's a be all end all, but um, it might be a nice core group to get started to then spill out and work with other community members. So, um, it's a possibility. Uh, we meet next, the end of April. Um, so I think, I think our next meeting will be before we meet next in April. So I'll be able to give you a better update then. Um, just hang on one sec. Let me look at the calendar. Is there contact information specific to you? Your Gmail? Um, not specific for me yet. Um, I'd okay. like to actually create a parade Gmail um, to right. make that right. okay. easier um, so multiple people. Actually, we meet ahead of the Women's Club, so I'll see what I have for updates then, but our next meeting is the 27th of April, so um, I'll, I'll update as I can next month um, based on um, what the interest is. Holly, that's a really good idea, because um, that's all you need is a core group of people that or would have fun together to be your committee. So well, you know, I mean, it, it's going to take a lot of boots on the ground to pull off the the day, but just to because we have good organizing skills within the club. I said, you know, is there an interest? Now, ironically or coincidentally, and kind of in a good way, the South Deerfield Women's Club for our club year that starts September of 2022 into um, April of 2023, we are celebrating our 125th year. So, so, you know, I think it's great that there's some symmetry and that's a little bit of the impetus that people think like, well, we could celebrate ourselves as we're celebrating the town. Yeah, absolutely. Oh my God, Holly, that's wonderful. Yeah, so, within the time frame. Yeah, I mean, people don't know that. I think that's amazing. That's well, really and you, cool. you know, we're we're at a place too where selfishly we want to get, you know, our our name out there and advertise who we are a little bit more, so we can have hopefully some increased membership and, you know, in, in a way to celebrate ourselves, celebrate the town. It could be a really good attention getter for the club. Yeah. Oh my so, gosh. Yes. Anyway, um, that's where that's at. And I will give you guys a better update, hopefully um, next month or shortly thereafter. Oh man, that's wonderful, Holly. Yeah. That's it from me. And the uh, route, the parade route, where is it going oh, oh, from, the route. To, to, um, from right where now, to where? Um, what we have uh, as our tentative, which I think is going to be what it will be, 
is launching from the South Deerfield Water District, um, tucked back across from Sugarloaf. Oh, that's and a good spot. Coming um, Sugarloaf into town, turning the corner at Park and going on North Main, hooking around to the high school parking lot. Oh, good, good start and stop spots. Yep. Yeah. And that's, that's that part branded. of it. Um, quite some time ago, I met with Adam Sokolowski and we talked about logistics and um, staging areas and traffic flow and all that good stuff. So, so that's, that's that. Any other questions? No, I'm fine. Fun. Jack, get in the house. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> Dog retrieval. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Are you all set, Diane? Yes. Thank you. Thank you okay, very you're much. You're welcome. Okay. Yeah. That's a nice juxtaposition with the women's club and the town's anniversary, too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it that is. is fabulous. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so people are even in the club talking about us doing a float, so would which would right. be really fun. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, great. Yep. Um, let's see. Kickoff weekend lighting is that uh, is that the next thing on the agenda? Or is it, I'm I'm kind of rem trying to remember what, what yes, was on yes. it. You have a good yeah. memory. Um, we tabled it last month because I think Jennifer was chatting with the town common people. Yeah. Carolyn, do you know anything about where that's at? Um, I do know the town common uh, request was approved by the CPC and um, and I'm on the capital committee and we uh, uh, also approved that. So I'm assuming that the um, common people are going to be very excited about that um, renovation that's going to be happening this year between now and when we um, celebrate. So I, I, I think there's going to be excitement there. I, I don't really have anything related to the 350th, but it is moving forward. And so people seem to be very excited. The committee's excited. So um, having the lighting down on the Tom Common is going to be really great. We'll have something, I'm sure. Okay. So um, I think Jennifer was going to reach out to them. Do yep. you know? Of, okay. All right. Let's. We, we should probably table that. Yeah. Yeah. I think I would table that till next meeting. Um, the, the only thing I'd just like to add is um, back to the women's club, Holly, you have all the um, lighting ceremony, you know, for the season, the holiday season happening. And, and maybe, maybe we do something again related to, you know, the lighting of the season related with the um, women's club. I don't know what people. Yeah. yeah. Um, try because there was good synergy you know about all the you know lights all over town and stuff like yep. that so, yep yep so maybe and, if you could just think about if it, we could do another thing with the women's club again or something okay um I, I can mention that as well um maybe people have ideas or whatever it my, seems my like it's my favorite little part of town was near Atlantic Furniture, where they put all those deer in between the trees. <laughs> oh, it was just so nice. fun to drive by there. Well, yeah. I mean, people really got in. You know, people all over town are, are into it, and you know, in the winter time, it's so dark and awful, yeah. Yeah. and it's so wonderful to see everybody's lights. So yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe we can just pull it to something else together related yeah. to. Okay. We had we had fun with the candles on the on the driveway. We had them had the whole driveway in the front of the house lit up with them. Yeah. That was fun. Yeah, it is fun for sure. Uh okay, so the FCAT, I I think you said you'd been in correspondence. They're they're gonna cover us. Whatever yes, we put on our schedule, they will do. Um, I forwarded them our tentative schedule already. So okay. Jonathan has committed to our events that we have already scheduled on the calendar. And um, he, we just have to let him know 
what events we have. I told them the first one obviously is December 31st, um, 2023. Uh, I mean, uh, 2022, December 31st, 2022. And um, then we move forward like that. And, and anything else that we add to the calendar, we just have to convey to him. And hopefully he'll, um, he said he was willing to cover everything as much as he possibly can. Um, I, I think we were gonna invite him um, to like tonight, but maybe we didn't. So. Should we invite him to the next meeting? Yeah, I can do that. I will, um, uh, let me just verify our next meeting is April 25th, I think. Oh, well, the problem is April 25th is our town meeting. Oh. So we. Um, so maybe we're not gonna meet on the 25th. Yeah, we could meet on the 26th if we want. Um, do you want to address to that, Peter, now, or do you want to do that at the end? Well, we might as well address it now. I'm on that second page already. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I'm okay on the 26th. Okay. I can't, I can't be there on the 26th. Oh, um, would there be a... Uh, I think I'm actually going to be away on the 18th. Um, How about... How about May 2nd? Uh, May 2nd. That would work. That's a Monday night, Holly. That's a Monday. Yeah. Um, I think that's okay. It's town election, but doesn't mean that we can't have a meeting, I don't think. Well, are you tangled up with stuff on election day? No, I, I just, you know, you just have to go and vote. That's all. I'm not, I'm not up for re-election or anything. So, um, so we're not having drinks at your house after? No, nobody's doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so we could do May 2nd if you want. Would that be okay, um, Kelly? Does that work for you? Yep, that works for me. Mondays are the best. Diane, how about you? That's fine. Thank you. Yes. Jay? Um, yep, good. Okay. We'll do it. All okay. right. May 2nd. Um, I'm assuming it's still Zoom because uh, we wouldn't be able to meet at the town hall, right? Yep. Okay. So what we'll do is um, we can let, I will call Casey to let her know that we're doing it on election night. And then I'll call Jonathan to invite him that night too. Okay. Okay. Does that, uh, is that gonna interfere with uh, Alex's responsibilities? I don't think so because um, Alex doesn't have anything to do with Alex. You don't have anything to do with um, election night, do you? It's just a it's just the town hall is open. That's all till eight o'clock. Um, I don't think so. Um, I don't think the registrars are supposed to be there um, for that. Um, right. Maybe to certify things later, but um, no, I can be here. Well, okay. I say that now, but who knows what happens. <laughs> But you know, as far as I know, there's no other meetings that night because of the election. So, um, so meeting meeting by Zoom is okay, guys. I think I'll just let Casey know. Okay. Um. So while we're on that topic, the last um, Monday of May is the thirty is uh, Memorial Day, the thirtieth. So should, should we look at maybe June 6th instead of that for our following meeting? Sure. Oh, uh, I see what you're saying. Well, you know, uh, we could go to the 23rd of May. If we meet May 2nd, we could go to the 23rd because if we meet June 6th, we're gonna go to the 27th of June. So sure. it's three weeks apart, no matter what. Either way. So what either just, way. Um, I'm okay with May 23rd and I'm okay with June 6th. So what's what's the majority say? Both works for me. I don't have any. Both works for me too at this point. I had it on my calendar as a 23rd anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Jake, how about you? Both are okay for me. 
Okay. Okay, let's just do the 23rd then. Okay. Okay. That way, um, uh, in case we get derailed a little bit over the summer, we have an extra meeting in May. Yeah, Sounds good. good. Yep. Yeah, good. All right. And that gives me two dates to ask Jonathan in case he has a conflict. Perfect. With, That's good. With, with um, May 2nd. So thank yeah. you, everybody. And and Kelly, when you, I think you're, we're caught up on the dates that I had previously booked for the Zoom. Yeah, I'll so, ask for the new ones. Yeah. Um, and you, you might just put a little footnote, you know, because of scheduling, we had to make a few, not the last Monday, um, just so they know what we're doing because we're usually okay. the last Monday. Okay. Thanks, Kelly. Mm -hmm. Oh, what happened? Oh, well, there you are. Somehow oh. you disappeared off my screen. I couldn't figure out where you've always gone. been here. <laughs> you're, just, you're off in the dark somewhere. Um, was the next one? The friends. Land, land acknowledgement. Where are we? No, friends of yeah. Deerfield. Friends of Deerfield. Okay, friends of Deerfield. Uh, Looks like we're tabling that, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Is, if I could make a comment, we seem to be tabling this without any idea of what's going on. I know it's not off to a booming start and we don't expect it to, um, but is there any idea we could get even an idea, even written in paper or, or somebody just sending a paragraph to let them know where they are in whatever they're doing? You know what? I, I, will, I can I, I can follow up with Chris Harris. Okay. If you wouldn't sure. mind, just a little something. Sure. Just to know that there's somebody out there. Yep. Thank you. Holly, you might just uh, give Chris the new dates so that you know the may 2nd and the may 23rd dates mm -hmm. so that you could have a little um if he can't make it he could do a little report for the you know yeah. a little summary like um diane suggested a little um blurb yeah yes yep. okay got it Good. Uh, where are we on? Okay, what's the next on the agenda? I don't think I, I've, I've sort of the lost. Land, the land acknowledgement. Okay, um, so I, I did send out the, the background paperwork to everybody. Is that, uh, is that correct? Yes. So I, and we had some earlier discussions, but uh, is this something that the steering committee uh, should be pushing. Um, do you want to be an active player in this? Uh, how do you, uh, what's, your, what's your sense? <clears throat> yeah, Diane. Um, if I could, I don't mean to be the primary yeah. in this. And it's, it's something I, I've sort of been thinking about because there it's, it's an unfortunate, uh, character that we've been doing all over this valley for a while. We took the land from the Indians. Uh, Deerfield people took it from other Deerfield. In the Quabbin, four towns were lost. When 91 came through, they took land. Um, it's something that it, I don't condone, um, but it's been a, something that's very unfortunate all through our area. And, and some people can go, oh, 91 going through wasn't a big deal. But for some people, it was a drastic effect to lose the towns of Enfield and, you know, Greenwich and, and Dana. Well, they took 51 and, acres, my so, dad's farm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know what I mean? And it's, it just, and I was thinking about it. It's like, but it's something that never seems to be stopping. Even excuse me to bring the 
Ukraine. I mean, people take land. It's it's an unfortunate character of humanity. Some will say it's for the better good of other people. Um, so it's not, I don't feel it's an isolated issue, but it can be acknowledged. But it is not an isolated issue, even for this valley watching 91 come through. It's something that is just, it's gone on. People will argue it's for the better of the area, the better of the majority. Um, not if you're in the minority, not if you're the loser. Yeah. Well, um, Diane, I, Diane, I would say that acknowledgement is so important, that's crucial. Yeah. But yeah. not getting into finger pointing or getting into yeah. what happened other places, because I think it's the whole history of humanity. <sighs> Unfortunately, yeah. 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 Yeah, Holly. Um, so I am not anti acknowledgement, but I think, um, and Carolyn had brought this up last month. Our committee task is to celebrate our town's anniversary. So for this committee to get involved in this versus the town of Deerfield um, as a full um, town community. Um, I, I just, I'm feeling tugged that I'm not so sure this is the place this belongs. I concur. And, yeah. you know, and having said that, I'm not saying having a presence of some acknowledgement, whether it's a talk, that happens during it, but for us to, as a committee, do some kind of declaration, um, I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm kind of just feeling it doesn't belong here. Well, I think it's not not appropriate to what we're trying to do, I guess. And but but I do want to acknowledge. I mean, I think acknowledgement is important, but we need to do it in a way that. Um, it's just an acknowledgement, but then we move on to the celebration of what we're trying to do. And I, I know it's awkward. Um, I don't, but I don't think it's appropriate to make a political statement. We're, we're really having a celebration. Yeah. And, and we're looking we'll forward and we're looking forward to being inclusive and stuff like that. And I don't know. Is there another town group that, that this would be make more sense? Well, it, it the, the way it's written is it's to be adopted by the town, not a committee. And I think that's the avenue that that should the petition should be carried to is, uh, you know, discussed at the town level and decided whether they, you um, know, the town wants to, to be involved or not. Uh, or or why adopt that approach. I mean, it, it's. Uh, why don't we send it to the? Why don't we send it to the select board's office? Um, not in April, but in May or June. You know, after town meeting and after town elections, um, and when things have a time settled down, so that I mean, right now it's craziness. So it would just get lost in the shuffle. But I think it's we should probably figure out some some way to deal with it that's appropriate i guess well, well what maybe maybe i can do this um i mean lila is a person who contacted me with the, the request to consider the petition and and why don't i just simply respond that the committee didn't feel that this was a uh that we were the appropriate body to submit it to and uh, suggest that she take it directly to the town uh, for consideration. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah, I agree, agree with that. Like, yeah. I would, yes. What I would say is that there are going to be enough events, I think, during the, the 350th uh, involving Native Americans and the talks and discussions. And I'm working on uh, getting some of the uh, tribal representatives to see if we can have a, a, a some event here in town uh, and that would not prevent them 
that would be a likely venue for them to get the word out uh, about the petition that they're proposing uh, to people in the town. I mean, if they want a, an event at which they can advertise uh, what, what they're uh, encouraging people to do or encouraging the town to do, that would seem to be the venue to, the, the way to get the word out. Um, I, I'm wondering. I'm wondering if we put it in some kind of context of 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 some kind of event, you know, uh, a lecture kind of thing, or uh, you know, a workshop maybe. This past weekend, or you know, the last three or four weekends, um, or in the last two months at least, um, Historic Deerfield has been doing a climate change. And, you know, the mini ice age was like from 1300 yep. to 1850. And this last one on Sunday was about the snowpack and how the uh, Native Americans were really actually embraced winter and the snowpack, like they hunted moose um, and, and they had the technology of snowshoes and they used snowshoes. Uh, they had a lot of snowshoes. And one of the things that was um, brought up was that the reason there was not a more of a response to the 1704 raid was because the settlers didn't have, or, you know, the colonists didn't have snowshoes or didn't have as many to go pursue the, you know, group. And, um, and they, you know, their animals all had to have forage. And so they were a lot less embrace of the winter versus the Native Americans. And so maybe we can do some kind of thing about climate change and you know culture and I wrap it in that way that it's more positive and part of our history instead of pointing fingers and making people feel guilty or making people feel bad about something that we have no control over you know I like that well, well I, I, I just I, thought that was kind of interesting about the snowshoes I said oh my gosh you know there's that that is a good explanation why there was so much snow and that's why there was no pursuit it's because they just didn't have snowshoes Maybe the oddest oh. factors that you wouldn't consider you know cultural <laughs> adaptation <laughs> and and the colonists yeah. you know tended to not go out in the winter time whereas the Native Americans embraced it and and they traveled a lot more because the rivers were frozen and it was colder. So, you know, like the Connecticut River was like this huge super highway. And um, so I thought, you know, that's very fascinating. So maybe we can talk about climate change and bring that in and and in, in, in a historic way and a non-accusatory way so people don't feel bad. I think we could pursue that as part of our history. I mean, that's a kind of interesting fact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I, I think it could be positive and make people understand without making people feel bad. And I, I, I just want to make sure that people don't feel bad about this or, you know, just, feel like it's wrong because, it, you know, there's nothing you can do about it anyway, you know? Diane, uh, uh, there's a, as far as I know, in Holland, uh, the invention of ice skates was occurring at about that time. And that was the Dutch response to climate changing and so forth. So there's parallels on different continents about how people cope with the cold and mm -hmm. the lack of snowshoes for all these Brits who came from a relatively nice, even, you know, climate, uh, that, that was a big shock. And I, I think that's something we could pull in. Other places did it too. The Dutch invented uh, ice skates. They just took these metal runners and bolted and slapped them onto their shoes and off they went. Well, I just, I just think it's fascinating how, you know, the moose have longer front legs and were designed mm -hmm. to go through the snowpack and that's what the Native Americans hunted. And I mean, there was just a huge difference. So why don't we celebrate their success, you know, with adapting to the colder weather and bring that in versus, you know, just we were bad. No, instead of finger pointing. Right, right, right. I, I don't know. I figured, Peter, that you could kind of 
pick up on this and figure out something. Well, I mean, I'm. We're we're going to be doing something on Native American stuff more than once. Let's put it mm -hmm. that way. Okay. Um, we'll come up then. Okay. Well, I'll I'll get back to uh, Lila and uh, we'll go from there. But I I think there's, there's going to be enough opportunity during that year celebration with talks and get togethers and everything else if they want to come together, introduce what they're, you know, interested in, talk about it and talk about it to the town um, rather than us. I don't think it's, they don't need our endorsement. It's, that's not what's gonna get, what's gonna move this thing. If the town's gonna move on, they're gonna move on it. If they're not, they're not. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I think it's, be, it, it's also important to read in detail the words of any resolution that gets passed on. I mean, when they talk about the Indians being the modern um, stewards of the landscape, one of the things that I did just for curiosity is looked at the federal census and there are no Native Americans listed in the federal census in Deerfield, Greenfield, um, there's three in Montague, uh, four or five in Northampton, none in uh, none in Northfield. You know, it's just one of these things where you can't take 300 years ago and put plop it down into the present day as sort of recovery. I think recognition. I would absolutely agree with anyone. Recognition of what has happened in the past is important. You, you, you shouldn't forget it. Um, I have the added advantage of knowing a lot more of history of what went on during that period. And for what it's worth, the Europeans didn't chase the Pocumtuck out of Pocumtuck, the Mohawk did. Well, I mean, disease is always really interesting to me. And no. it's important to help. And, and people got killed off by all the European diseases way before, you know, people settled here. You know, they were wiped out already. And it was, I mean, that's awful too. They took a huge chunk of, of that population. I mean, the, the, the estimates are anywhere from 75 to 90, 90%. Yep. Uh, so, I mean, it's that whole episode, well, that whole time period it's it, it it it's interesting and it's not just north america i mean you ever hear of the 30 years war and the 100 years war i mean this is what was ravaging europe for centuries so it, it, was, it was it was just an awful time well you had the plague and you had starvation and i mean it was it was grim well, i mean the black death took out half the european population i mean we're talking millions and millions of people so anyway, okay, I'll I'll pursue that with Lila and uh, uh, do we have now oh, Diane? Uh, I think you're. I think we're pretty much there. Um, it was uh, you have the historic working group update. Okay, um, I was I had an appointment with um, John Davis uh, scheduled for March eighth, and I figured that would be. So when we had this meeting, I could report out on that, but he got sick. So that's been canceled and I'm gonna meet uh, with him on the 8th of April. Uh, he's the new president of Historic Deerfield. So I, I, I wanna make sure that both Historic Deerfield and we're on the same boat. And, and I've got liaisons with Historic Deerfield already so that it's, I, I don't expect any surprises or anything. It's just, I'd like to get the top of the, uh, the organization uh, up to date in terms of what we're planning and what we're doing and that sort of thing. So, uh, and in terms of um, talking to tribes, uh, and this is something Jen wanted me to do. Um, there's a, a project uh, called the uh, Turner's Falls Battlefield Project. It's been going on for a number of years. There are tribal representatives to that project and each of the towns 
uh, Deerfield, Montague, uh, Gill have town representatives on that project as well. Um, John Nove, who's the head of the Historic Commission for Deerfield, is also uh, the um, um, representative from the town of Deerfield for that particular project. So at the last meeting, I unfortunately had a dead car, but uh, John did extend an invitation to the tribal representatives and to the that program itself uh, to become involved in our 350th uh, anniversary uh, celebration. So we'll pursue that uh, as time goes on for uh, being more specific, but um, there was a, at, at least for the uh, Southern Abnaki, uh, there's, there's de a definite interest in, in participation. And I think we can, it, it's, it's a really interesting project. It has to do with the battlefield itself and using archeology span to understand that event. And the uh, project, they've been out for three years in the summer times with metal detectors and stuff, and they've been able to trace the retreat route of the settlers after the Turnus Falls fight by tracing out the musket balls across the landscape, which they can do all the way to the Deerfield River. Uh, so I, I think one of the components of uh, one of the presentations during the, the 350th will be a report out uh, on that entire project. Um, it's, it, it's been quite an undertaking, but it's been very revealing. And um, I've been working with them off and on in terms of doing background research and stuff. So um, it, it, it's been fun, but I think it's time it would, it, it would be a good thing to bring to the 350th celebration in, in, mm -hmm. in one or more talks. Um, I guess that's that's the follow up that I would give right now. So, Diane, let's uh, hear your okay. piece. Well, I have the I wrote up two papers. Um, the one that says to the police department of Deerfield, I actually hand delivered to the police department the other day and gave it to the secretary and said it's not confidential. You could post it anywhere around to see who's interested or to just let them know. And if you haven't opened it, basically I just told them that I'm gonna be trying to do a walking tour, would like to borrow cones and any help they could give me. And then further on, I um, I don't know if I, I out of my, my area, but I asked them if they could possibly do a bike rodeo um, at their town garage this summer. I was involved with one years ago when I was in the scouts uh, it was very well received. That brings out the young eight to 12 year olds. I'm not sure. Um, I wrote the uh, the different parts of the bike rodeo would be uh, bicycle check, helmet check, uh, possibly giving out helmets, repair zone, air minor repair, teaching repair, and a cone zone obstacle course. Uh, I, like, as I said, that was a good, maybe 12 to 15 year olds because they were just getting into do cones and stuff like that. I'm not sure how um, they'll pick it up if John will be able to get any grant funding for helmets or anything like that or whatever, but I put a bug in his ear for that. And then, then I also at the very end thanked him. My, my sentence, my last sentence was, thank you for any help as Deerfield will be approaching a very busy 2023 as Deerfield celebrates its 350th birthday, I'm trying to initiate community involvement and will and will attempt to keep you informed of the walks and gave them contact info. That was my police department um, memo. Uh, the finding Deerfield, which I, I yeah, hopefully you'll get, um, is the purpose initiate community involvement post COVID with outdoor activities around Deerfield. These are areas we drive by haven't been in a while or want to discover, but would feel more comfortable in a group. Duration, one hour. Where? Uh, the first one would be my Waitley Road from Trinsky's Pond to the Route 91 cul-de-sac, interspersed walk, landscape, and local history. 
Uh, if I could get in touch with you, Peter, for more local history, I'd appreciate that. Um, another one okay. I'd like to, if I could, I've attempted to contact the Clarks twice. I wouldn't mind doing the orchard. One hour in the Blossom Orchard. Um, I have sent a, I called their orchard phone number and I try to do a Facebook send. I may not be doing right, Carolyn. But well, they're, they're closed you. right now. Pardon? They're closed right now. So maybe if they could be away. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought of that also. But I wouldn't mind, you know, blossom time. Just just an hour. Just either walk through, take pictures with the kids, uh, something like that. I've also thought of doing the meadows. Uh, June, hay season, uh, the Northwest Meadows behind DA. That would make a nice walk. Uh, the East Deerfield train yard, uh, do a train talk. And then there's a uh, bridge rail tra trail that goes over the Connecticut River. Yeah. I'm afraid of it, but I would love to go with a group of people if somebody knows how to do that. You know, just uh, the idea. I've been under it in a canoe, but walking over it somehow just gets me a little odd. Uh, Pocumpook <laughs> Ridge, I wouldn't know the first place of how to get there. I haven't been for over 20 years. Sam, do. Well, what you do? I, I, I live up here, so. Okay. Then I have Sand Gully, uh, the old drag site when uh, 91 was built. I remember Sand Gully drag. That was the hot spot when we were in, we were kids in school and all the big kids who drove around with their cars. <laughs> uh, Sugarloaf Mountain and, and um, at the end, I wrote, at times, I may ask for volunteers that like train buffs, hikers, that Sand Gully crew to help fill in the story. And I have no particular schedule. Um, I'm actually considering one of them to be a flash mob. Uh, ahead of time, I'll let you know in a week. I'll let you know on a, on a Tuesday. I'll let you know tomorrow type of thing, because one of them's right in the middle of town. You're from that list, you may guess one of them. I need one of the more accessible ones. Um, anyways, that's what I would like to do. So there. <laughs> Holly. Um, first of all, bravo. I think this is so fun. I mean, it's just, it's a lovely little snapshot time for people to see areas of the town that maybe they don't even know about. So I think it's wonderful. Were you looking, Diane, at this year or during 2023? Uh, it could be interspersed both out, or we just sort of play it by ear, sort of invent them as the seasons change, as I get the people to help me. You know, okay. Pum -pum yeah. Ridge, what's the best time? Fall time, uh, the meadows, hay season, just that type of thing. Uh, summertime, maybe no, because nobody will be around. Um, I'm sort of winging it, and maybe we can do like... Um, Every meeting, I'll give another proposal. We'll set a date and, and and give the info out. Yeah, something that I think something like that might uh might be the way we roll. As I get in touch with different people to help me, um, that may that may be the way to do it, if it's okay. Well, oh, I think I as as these get uh you know as you roll them out, the the word's going to get out that these walks occur. Yeah, and and, and I would like to give. I would like to give it a name, Finding Deerfield, just so it's a connecting thing. I mean, I'm not going to make a site or anything like that, but just give it a, a hey, did you see the where Finding Deerfield is going to be? Just to give it a catch or a tag uh, to connect to. Well, you know, it's, it, one of the ahead, things Peter. that occurred to me, oh, sorry, Holly. Um, That's okay. One of the things that occurred to me, we don't have any stickers or anything for the 350th, do we? I'm just weekend. wondering about whether this would be a perfect vehicle for advertising the 350th. Yeah. As, as, as a sort of some something that could be given to people that show up on the walks. I've actually thought of that. When we when the scouts went to the mountain, they got a sugarloaf specific patch. I made sure yeah. I ordered oh, patches yeah. ahead of time and, and somebody wanted to cancel the, the thing for the season. I said, we can't. I made the patches already. We have to have the walk. <laughs> but I'm wondering if we can come up with a patch or something for, for the 350th that could, you know, you could give out. Yeah. 
Uh, I'm how, not sure. how, how about something like a fridge magnet or something? Uh, yeah. That's an idea yeah. too. That's an idea. We also had, I, I have a, I have about 10 of them is the, uh, the little metal tin with the, like a, um, what do you call it? The, the stick pen. It's a round metal oh, yeah. tin and you uh, yeah. Yeah. stick it on. Yeah. I have a bunch of those, um, but yeah, I think maybe we should get for even get friends in Deerfield or get some something to say I was there. You know, I, I actually thought it about that, but. I bet we could get um, um, the town seal in just a magnet, you know, just just a plain, you know, not anything, but the, just a round magnet, just like you would. Um, I mean, you could get like a hundred for like 50 bucks or something. I'm, I'm, what I'm thinking of, this would be a really good thing for us to spend our town money on that we have and as a promotion. And, and Diane, you could just, whoever participates can get a town magnet or something, you know? Okay. Yeah. You know, yeah. we just have to, I, I'm sure we can order those magnets. Just, you know, just the cheap um, flat, yeah. flat metallic thing Would that be a friends of deerfield yeah. thing yeah well i'm not sure if it would be a friends of deerfield i mean that because they are the fundraising but this could be um as a, in a promotion of event of the of our you know finding deerfield this could be the campaign of you know of get get involved in the 350th or something to generate excitement that that is the intention is to initiate if we have to spend a hundred dollars to get you know 500 or a hundred you know little ma um magnets i mean that seems like a really cute thing to do you know yeah and i think i like the idea if we keep it simple with the town seal and then maybe we could just put the two web links or or yes, yes. just just the, ah, the link excellent. to the website yes. Yeah, Perfect. website and Facebook. I don't know. Just yeah, something really, something really inexpensive. I'm sure we could get it for like a quarter a piece or something. Who would be is that something you would be doing, Carolyn, or right? Well, I, we can or... we can just look it up on the internet. Actually, okay. I will and ask I, Jennifer. I'm not trying to give it to you. I I'm not sure. No, 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 no. I'll ask Jennifer to do the okay. research. She, she's that really would be good. nice. Yeah, I actually thought of it, and then. The whole you can't do the money thing, and it's like uh, I'm not sure, but yeah, we, something we would be really we good. We can't charge things, Diane. But if yeah. we bought something to give as a promo, then that yeah. could come out of the town. Well, that's account. what I mean. This yeah. would, this okay. would be like a I like that idea. It would it would be very cheap, and it would be part of promoting the 350th to people. You know, this finding Deerfield. And um, I think that would be a wonderful thing to do. And we could have some kind of stamp. You could have a little stamp pa passport or whatever. I don't know. I was thinking of a, of a map of Deerfield or something and just stamp. I don't know. Them. Yeah, just we could yeah, think about I, something. I, I, that's yeah. something I'm, uh, at, which to help go along, I'd like a little help with history. Peter, if you could, if you know any of those houses on Elm Street in my area, like the Decision House, the Zakowski House, what what are, what's your what's your schedule the rest of the week? I'm I'm around. I'm home. Give me, give me your phone number or send me your phone number and we'll. It's at we'll the bottom together. of one of those documents I sent. Uh, four fifty three nine one one five. Four fifty three. Text me there. I would love to see these photos. Okay. And um, uh, we would need a pick a time. I would like to do the end of April, beginning of May. Um, is how do, do we pick the time together? Do I pick a time? I'm giving you a general. You're the one. You're the one that's doing it. So it's your up. Uh, however, <laughs> what's your schedule? Okay. So you want to you want to have I, enough time that you can advertise it though. Um, are, are, are you planning on doing something in the next month? Uh, end of April. Last okay. week of April would be what's what I'm thinking of. Okay, so before our next meeting. We actually, yeah. Okay. And I'll give you a call. We'll get together this week. Okay. All righty. 
I'm, um, I'm not well, I'm not a Facebooker, Diane. So if you could just let me know when you're going to do it. Uh, that's also another thing is postings. Um, I could do it on Facebook, but um, do I get in touch with FCAT? Um, I well, got the address. What you can you. do is uh, Trevor has um, a Deerfield now. Uh, we're, we're not as a select board. We don't do anything individually, but yes, I mean, I'm in Deerfield together, now. Together, together. But all you have to do is ask Trevor to put it posted on Deerfield now. And then you can ask Jennifer Gannett in our office to post it on the town pages, web page and, um, you know, um, there's Facebook. Jen, is she in the town hall? Yeah. I yeah. gotta go pay my taxes tomorrow, I'll find her. Okay, she's in the Slegman's office right Gannett. across from the town. Yep, right okay. across from the town clerk's office. Those postings, okay. Uh... Already, maybe I won't have the day by then. Um, but okay. you get her, I think it's uh, 105, extension 105, I think. Uh, but just if you're going into the town hall, just walk across the, to the I and then talk to her. Yeah. I can ask. I'm she'll not, know, sorry. she'll know what, or she'll talk to you about the Facebook thing. And I forget it. Okay. Um, Okay, if I don't have a date, are there just an, an idea for people? I was sort of thinking of a Thursday, Friday, um, maybe a four or five o'clock is soccer or t-ball or anything you know that's coming on. Um, I'm going to make sure there's no Red Sox game if I can help it. You know, whatever it could be contrary uh, to people coming out. There's lots of kids sports ramping up in April. Um, yeah, they're that's all, exactly they're all yeah, they're like every night, so it's hard to gauge. It depends on the sport and the, the coach. And they're usually home by 5, 5.30. Or uh, my kids go till 7, so it's usually like 7, 7.30. Okay, I'm ready. You could talk, talk call uh, Susie Antonellis and, you know, the rec department so that you could find out what little kids are doing. Um, Ke Kelly, probably... Probably Carl Sayre would probably be the best one. He's the athletic director at Frontier. You could just call Frontier and then ask for his extension. He's the athletic director. So you could let, let him, he could probably tell you what's happening on a Thursday or Friday in particular. Diane, I have Jennifer Gannett's phone number and extension. Do you want it? Sure. 665-1400 um, and extension 104. Oh, it's 104. I'm sorry. Yeah, Casey's 105. Okay. That's okay. You and can't you remember one, everything, Kira. No, it's one or the other. I always get one or the other. <laughs> but um, Carl Sayers' number, you have probably have to call Frontier, but let me see if I have his extension. Um, and, and once I do have a time, I will approach the Deerfield uh, Police Department again. Uh, who knows, they may or may not want to have a bicycle police cop come around and ride around or maybe offer cones and um, I don't want them parking anywhere near the bridge. Uh, well, John Pachork is really good. So well, just he lives right there by the pond anyway. Yeah. So yeah. Just yeah. talk to him to find out what he what he would suggest for safety. Yeah, that's the idea, and I, I don't mean... They'll be very supportive, I'm sure. I don't mean to impose by approaching them before oh, no, I no, the people, but I, uh, no, well, I want, I want to get it going somehow. When, uh, yeah. Uh, no, the already. police department is extremely supportive, and, it, and it's far better to talk about safety issues and get everything resolved than it is to have something happen. So um, we're, that's wonderful. All righty. So I guess until I set a date and get a little worked out a little bit more, uh, Peter, I will uh, get in touch with you to get a little bit more history. I'd like to, with it maybe in the next week or so, have a date and a time and roll with that and, and post it on Facebook and, and whatever I need to do. Okay. Well, just I'll... Uh... I'll be in touch and uh, we'll go from there. Where are the pit? Where are the pictures? My, are they at your house? Right you behind. Huge, you have a huge pile. 
<laughs> I've, I've, well, wait a minute. Computer boxes, right? <laughs> Oh man. And looks like oh it. look at that. Yeah. Have you sorted them by road already or are you working? Oh on yeah, them? they're all sorted. All right. Oh wow. my gosh. Peter, that's cool. wonderful. How there's exciting. 200, there's 250 pictures in there. Wow. Oh, that's wonderful. That Excellent. I'm getting really excited yeah. about that. Definitely, definitely want to see my road then. Would definitely like to see <laughs> the road. One of the cool. things that's nice about the Howe brothers is they got the folks that were living in the house to come stand out front while they took the pictures. So if I you like want to see what your great great grandmother looked like, if we have her house, she's probably standing out in front. In the yard. <laughs> and I'll have to see if she had her shoes on or off. Yeah, well. <laughs> For people that grew up here. And then how wonderful the people that have houses that you know, to see who owned the houses before. How wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Well, these were taken around 1900, so they're 120 years old. Yeah, but how wonderful. It could be somebody's great-grandfather or grandmother or whatever. Well, I, I actually, uh, I don't know if you, any of you know Gary Sanderson, but uh, I graduated he, used, with him. he used to live on Pleasant Street. And um, his, uh, he's related to the Armses who built a number of the houses around North Main Street and Pleasant Street. Uh, he used to live on there, and uh, one of the one of the houses was an old arms house. And uh, he actually saw his great grandfather as a like a four year old standing there with his great great grandmother out in front of the house. So wow. it's possible. Yeah, and I, I, and I think one of the things that's really kind of fun. Uh, and I'm hoping I'm working with a woman in Deerfield right now on uh, Polish uh, families to see if we can identify them. And if I can tie them to the house, then we may be able to actually see some of the first wave immigrants uh, who came to this country as young adults or kids. Um, Anyway, I think that. See, that's the kind of stuff I think people are truly going to enjoy. And, yeah. and they had a tough life. So, Absolutely. you know, I, um, and they worked, some of them worked so wicked hard. It was unbelievable. So, well, it, it, it's interesting in some of the pictures because the, um, just the clothing that people are wearing and the caps is you can, you can pick out a, an old Yankee. He doesn't, he's not wearing, a Polish style hat, you know, but you've got those folks there too, and it's great. Yeah, yeah. I, I think if I lived in one of the historic houses, I would love to have a picture of the people who came before me in my house. I think it would just be a really cool thing. Yeah. yeah well, I'm, I'm kind of working on that. I mean, we've got that's a great set, but we've got other photographs as well. I've probably got. I don't know, close to 350, 400 photographs of Deerfield. Um, and I, I think a lot of them were, Gary and I have been working probably for the past six months on deed research and, and stuff for particularly on North Main Street and also Mill River. Um, because all of the lots south of the bars were derivative of a 1688 land distribution. They're all sub portions of that. And uh, I finally figured out how to map them all. So I know where the lots are. And then we can just, I know who was grant, who were granted the lots. And now we're trying to figure out, well, who did they sell them to? So we've been through stacks of deeds, looking at how, and each one of these lots was like, two and a half to three miles long and anywhere from 50 feet to 750 feet wide. And they went from North Main Street or um, Mill Village Road, either from there east to the Connecticut River or from there west to the West Mile, West Mile Line, seven mile line, which is the Western border of Deerfield. 
So these were huge lots, all divided up among 50 guys. Anyway, that's part of our history. Yep. I actually find it interesting. I was taking a walk past the field in front of coconuts, which is mud. It's just chocolate pudding. And thinking to myself how interesting those guys you were talking about have the dry soil. And my area is Polish neighbor after Polish neighbor after Polish neighbor. And it evidently, uh, that was the land that was left over next to the poor farm for the Polish yep. people. I mean, you know, my, my uncle used to joke, ah, you live in a swamp, you live in a swamp because the tractors would get stuck. Um, in a wet season, it's the soil that you have a hard time working. But in a drought, that's the good soil to have around. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Well, we're talking about healthy soils, which your root systems are are storage for the water. They're um, and then they filtrate it, but then also they release it in a drought. So, I mean, our whole history is tied up into all this kind of stuff. So. And, and it's coming, or, you know, the cycle's coming around with the climate change and how we talk about healthy soils and the importance of healthy soils to us right here at the bottom of a bowl where all the rivers converge. It's pretty interesting. You know, one of the things that's interesting is that our, as an archeologist, I've had a, the opportunity to look at a long time depth in terms of history and in cultures, environments and that sort of thing. And this is not the first climatic warming that has occurred in the past 10,000 years. There was a, actually a period that lasted a couple of thousand years called the hypsothermal back about 5,000 years ago when we had a, a, a climate that was roughly 250 to 270 frost-free days. Wow. The, water, the water table was about 15 feet lower Really? Ponds dropped, it just, uh, it was, the rivers just incised and stayed there because the flooding didn't occur. Huh. Uh, it's just, uh, it, it's quite amazing. So yeah. that, that's the other end of the extreme. I mean, we had the little ice age and that's what we were talking about with the Indians and the, and the moose and the, you know, that, that end of it. But uh, we've had some real uh, prominent warming spells as well. Um, and you see it where the water is so bad that uh, the summer, the uh, native communities would actually retreat, uh, retreat well up into the tops of the mountains to have a cooler climate. Hmm. Uh -huh. So anyway, um, Okay, I don't, are there any, uh, I don't think there's any other um, business. I, I just had one thing. Yeah. Um, I, I just wanted to say um, Kelly tra transferred over doing the agenda. She did a great job. And yeah, um, I just wanted to say thank you again. And um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Than I, could be. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I am appreciative. Um, and, and the last thing, Peter, I noticed that somebody joined us um, during the meeting. They're connected through audio. I didn't know if you wanted to see if they had any questions. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure how I do that, but if uh, someone wants to unmute, if, you, if you're connected and would ask, like to ask a question. Do you see that, Alex? Yeah. Um... I assume they're they're definitely listening. Um, I think they have to go in and they have to um, connect to the audio. Um, there, there should have been a prompt or something that comes up when you first join. When when I see it, it says connecting to audio, but it's not connected. Mm -mm. Looks like yeah. it's playing. Yeah, I'm seeing the same thing. Um, okay. I just didn't want to overlook someone if they wanted to say. Any oh, comments. that's good. That's good, Holly. I'm... Well, well, I would assuming make Assuming they're not connecting, um, I'll take a motion to adjourn. I will make Second. that motion. <laughs> Boy, that was 
I'm not <laughs> sure who beat on that one. <laughs> one hand and one voice. <laughs> Catch them together. We'll do a Cara oh, Diane. Uh, all right. All those in favor? I second it. All right. Yeah. All those in favor? Hi, Hi Holly. Hi. Okay. Carolyn. We're good. Kelly. Yeah. Jay. Hi. Thank you. Okay. We're adjourned, folks. Okay. okay. Thank yeah. you all. Hey, Carolyn. Bye.